stopped uh, recording. Okay, so um, this is Finance Committee meeting of May 30, 2023, and I'm calling the meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. And this meeting is being held by Zoom. Members of the public have access to the meeting uh, by Zoom, and um, they uh, we need to just remind everybody that the meeting is being recorded for both audio and visual uh, purposes. And with that said, I'm going to um, call on each member of the committee to um, indicate that they can hear me and I can hear them. So I'll start with Anna. Present. Uh, Lynn. Present. Uh, Bob. I'm present. Matt. Present. Bernie. Present. Kathy. Here. And Alicia, we don't um, have any indication um, that she's in. She, that she's present. So um, at this point, we will uh, not count her as uh, we count her as absent for the moment, and hope that she's able to join us. And uh, but we have a quorum present, and we have one additional member of the council, but uh, insufficient to constitute uh, a quorum. But Jennifer's. Uh, Bob is also with us in the call. Jennifer, I assume that you can hear. And... I can, so, thank you. Okay. So, um, Lynn, if you notice a quorum of the council at any point, uh, let us know. Um, so, with that said, um, I'm going to start by seeing if there's a member of the uh, public who would like to make public comment and remind anybody who wishes to make public comment, I see a hand up, so I'm going to uh, have that person uh, brought in as, uh, in, into the meeting um, and uh, just remind you that um, we um, ask the public comment be on any issue relating to the Finance Committee. It does not have to be something that's on the agenda tonight, but um, we want people always to have the opportunity to speak to the Finance Committee about any issue that's relevant to us. And with that said, um, Bertie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and say what uh, district you live in, and then uh, please offer us your, your comments and try and stay within three minutes, but please join us. Thank you. Um, my name is Bertie Newman. I'm calling in from District 3, and I'm commenting to urge you as members of the Finance Committee to guide the, the entire council to slow down, revisit, and revise the FY24 budget. Um, remembering back to the 2021 report by Seven Generations Movement Collective, BIPOC accounts of policing in Amherst described fear, dehumanization, distrust, lack of cultural competency, in the APD, lack of diversity on the police force, and disrespect by police for communities of color. Still, the proposed FY24 budget continues to fully fund the Amherst Police Department, even while press cannot operate 24-7. Thus, folks who are not safe or comfortable with police are left to wait until the morning to seek help if they experience a conflict or concern outside of press's hours of operation. That's not the racial justice I want to see in Amherst. I think that it's time for a budget that moves money out of policing and into initiatives like CRESS, DEI, a youth empowerment center, a BIPOC cultural center, a resident oversight board, and anti-racist trainings. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, I uh, do need to observe, and just for the uh, sake of anybody who's uh, um, present at the meeting in any form that we are as a finance committee limited mm -hmm. to responding within 30 days of um, providing the budget. So we are required and um, to make a recommendation and submit it to the council uh, by tomorrow. So the finance committee is under a time 
requirement that is built into the charter and uh so we are that that is the task of today and i mention it because uh well we don't normally respond to um, public comment it is really relevant to what our task is today um just prior um to the um meeting i've been having a conversation with sean that i wanted to make public to the committee and make public generally and that is that um we have um an order that we're being asked to consider that was um, part apparently of the original presentation um, for uh, borrowing authorization for one of the enterprise funds for a capital expenditure of one of the enterprise funds. And uh, if we are going to make a recommendation on that today, um, I think we need a little bit more explanation than we had um, previously. And uh, so I'm going to ask Sean uh, to please uh, explain um, what the order is and uh, where it fits into the process, because it's not in our report. And uh, I think that we're being put in an awkward position now if we don't get this rectified and added to the report that we will be needing to make recommendation in an order that's not reflected within the report we've uh, drafted for the council and are going to be discussing in a minute. So, Sean? Yeah, so um, I think this is a somewhat of a symptom of our process was a little bit different this year where we didn't do um, department head presentations, partly for the sake of time. Um, where department heads could give a little bit of an overview of their department and what was coming up. Um, we sort of went straight to FAQs, but um, yeah, from the beginning uh, in the budget presentation, we proposed that there were gonna be two debt authorizations, one for the pumper truck and one for pump station number four, um, which is a uh, project within the uh, sewer fund. Um, it is in the budget to an extent, it's not really in the sewer section because there's no cost implications for FY24. Um, it would the repayment when it start until later on, um, but it's in the upcoming objective section of the sewer fund. You'll see the to complete the replacement of Southeast uh, Pump Station Number Four. Um, it is on the in the back of our budget where we list all the actions and all the appropriation requests. It's listed there, um, and it was list explained not explained very well, but it was listed in this uh, executive summary saying uh, under Council Actions on page eleven which said that we would be asking for two debt authorizations. Um, so all that being said, um, and, and the last thing I'll say is in the financial summaries that the committee reviewed as part of the enterprise funds, those five-year summaries where we looked at the in, uh, inflows of revenue and the outflows of expenses, um, it's been factored in there. In the sewer fund, there was a projected debt repayment. It's part of that projected debt uh, repayment column. Um, I can't remember if we explicitly discussed it when we went through uh, the enterprise funds or probably would have been when we went through the water and sewer rates. Um, I'd have to go back and look but it, um, or listen, but uh, it's been part of the plan from the beginning. Um, I won't do as good a job as uh, Guilford when it comes to explaining why, but essentially we have a, a pump station that's part of our wastewater system um, that is not operational and we've had to uh, sort of begin preliminary plans because it's somewhat urgent to um, replace it and uh, repair it. And this would be the remaining cost to completely replace the pump station number four. And if the committee feels like it needs additional info, um, you know, I could try to get something from Guilford uh, prior to the the vote from the council or, or, you know, whatever you guys ultimately decide you want to do. Um, it is somewhat urgent, so I don't I don't want to delay it too much. Um, but if it had to be postponed, um, uh, I, I could get some from Guilford quickly. So I guess let me first see if there are any questions now from members of the committee. Seeing the yeah no the, uh, I, 
Lynn, I saw your hand wave. Before. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't get to the to it fast enough. Um, when I do remember this discussion, I'm trying to find a document where it's described, and I wondered, Sean, whether you um, can find that, or if in fact we have a financial order for it. You've had, yeah, you've had a. There's a financial order for it in the packet. Um, and okay. it was in the it was in the packet back on May first as well. So it's it's been part of the. Okay. Um, but there's no there's no memo um, accompanying it because we didn't haven't typically okay. done memos as part of the budget process. But um, but it has there's an order for it and it's in the packet okay. tonight. Thank you. Yeah, and I just as indicated, but uh, it was looking over the orders this afternoon that. Uh, I all of a sudden said, wait a minute, I don't remember this one. And uh, that's what started this conversation. Kathy, let me turn to you. Um, I'm just gonna, I think it's sort of building on Lynn's comment. Um, I'm, I'm basically fine with this, but um, I, we've made a couple, rec we've made at least one recommendation for the format of the budget book um, that in the future, we figure out a way Sean to show fringe benefits in a table, not necessarily down to the finest piece. A couple times in the joint capital planning committee, it's come up the, the capital plan should include the enterprise funds as an explicit section of it. And if it did have that, we would have had the pump station in there for debt authorization. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I looked across the Northampton one, it, it gets very long if you do that, but it's, it's basically putting something in if it's specific to the enterprise funds. And then Lynn, we would have had it as a section of the capital improvement program. Um, and you, we could decide whether we wanted to formally have a discussion at JCPC about it, but at least it should be, when I think of a capital plan, it should be all capital, not just general fund capital. So it would be a way of capturing for people that the centennial plant, um, we had to do an, a special one one year, the first year, I think, <laughs> um, that suddenly, oh, we forgot the plant and it was $11 million then. Um, but so so I just it's a request to think forward on this. So we don't find a it gets barely mentioned on page 11. It's sort of mentioned, but it's not mentioned in the way Lynn just said. Mm -hmm. And then you, then you could also avoid a separate memo because there would have to be a section in the capital plan right. that was a paragraph on this. So it's I, I'm I am fine with it because it's come up a few times, but it would be hard to find the written document around mm -hmm. this. Um, so, so that's, that's a looking forward suggestion. I, I see Bob was shaking up and down head. You know, I just, I like things packaged in ways that's logical for me, regardless of how it was done before the council happened, sure. you know, whatever the history was of why we've done it this way. I, I just think it's cleaner. Thanks. Sorry. I'm, my hand is down. Yeah. Oh, Lynn. I have found the per, the financial order in the um, May 1st documents. Um, if people would like, I can bring it up and show it to people. Um, I mean, it's there and it's also in the packet for today's uh, meeting. Uh, I think, I mean, you can, um, while we're talking, um, maybe it is worth bringing it up now because maybe and maybe we should just go ahead and then consider whether to vote on it while it's on the screen because we don't have to do all of the votes in the same order. The uh, question that I have was is whether there's any um, objection to doing a slight amendment to the section on the enter this particular enterprise fund point out that there's uh one capital e expenditure that involves borrowing from this enterprise fund and is reflected in an order that is being presented to the council just so that there's something even if it's just a sentence or two in the report 
that acknowledges that it exists and ties back, ties the two together. And uh, if I could get a hold of Amy or Seki tomorrow and or Guilford and either of them have a few sentences of explanation that they would propose that makes sense, I could add that too. So that would be my suggestion of how to how to handle this. And uh, so let's see what Bob had. Bob. Your hands yeah, I, I was just going to suggest that um, in the in the report um, under the sewer fund, at the end of the first sentence, we could add a clause to the effect that you know the rates are going up partly due to you know uh, the request to for for debt author or the debt debt request for pump station number four, and then you get an explanation from Guilford or Amy to as to why it's important to replace this thing just a one sentence that's what I would recommend um yeah I think that the other thing that I was hoping to do is also tie into pointing out the order so that when the okay. council was looking at the orders the, the the four orders that there's reference to the order in the report uh, okay that would be the additional piece because I think that uh, there, there's enough knowledge about the pumper, but this one is taking the group by surprise. So that would be the the other addition that I would make. And I also, if I understood uh, Sean correctly, this will not affect the. This is not a factor in the rates we're approving for um, FY twenty four. This is a future because uh, the borrowing wouldn't be repaid during the year. That's correct. So it's actually a future rate question, not a, not a rate for the year that we're approving. Kathy? Um, so just following up on that comment, I think that sentence needs to be in there too. I, I like what Bob said is put it in that um, there is a debt service authorization, then you can cross-reference it. And this will not affect FY24, but it will starting in FY25. I originally put my hand up because as I'm reading this, unless I'm missing it, it never says the sewer enterprise fund. So this is this is all, and I don't know what our normal, you know, this is this just reads like regular capital, but the sewer enterprise funds revenues for that would be paying for this debt. So do we not need to somewhere say that this debt is Sean? I don't know how they normally, you know, what did Centennial say? You know, are you talking it, about in the report itself? No, I'm saying that the order that I'm looking at does not use the word enterprise fund anywhere, sewer so enterprise fund. It just appropriates um, debt service. So do we? not need somewhere to say this is uh the you know the service for this will be repaid by the sewer enterprise fund so I, i'm just looking for a way that this isn't being paid out of somewhere you know, else somewhere. um yeah i mean so we we list it specifically under the sewer fund in our sort of our appropriation table at the end but let me just double check um one yeah, I mean, the question I think the question is actually a good one. I appreciate you raising it, Kat, because uh, if in like the centennial uh, borrowing, there's reference in the order to the centennial fund, and that's a common practice for borrowing related to enterprise funds, then the question is whether there's a problem with the order not being sufficiently clear and whether <clears throat> the order might be revised before um, it's actually on the council agenda. Which yeah, is so later. so if it makes anyone feel better, we have had Sonia review all the orders this year. Um, <laughs> that's one of our <laughs> one of our lingering responsibilities is to still review them all. But let me just pull up the centennial so you can see how um, how that one was done. So this one is a little more 
Um, I'll share my screen real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't believe they typically have the actual fund. But this is how um, Centennial looked. So this one's a little bit more robust because it has the, the clean water um, revolving fund in it. Is that too small? Can you see, everybody see that? We can see it. So I believe pretty much we copy and pasted the same language to, to prepare the order this year, except for this part here, because uh, it doesn't apply. No, so it certainly doesn't there either. So I missed it. I missed it that time around too. Um, you know, I I understand what we're doing. I just think it's maybe we need to figure out whether we should generally do that so that people understand where the debt. So yeah, I want to repay. I, I you know I yeah. I don't need to change it right now if this is the way it's been approved. But it it's that's what my question is because yeah. it. It's treated differently in the tank and the way we pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can look at that. I know in the past, um, there's been a, a point of contention with Sonia because there's lots of wordsmithing we can do to orders. Um, and sometimes it, it does more harm than good to, to <laughs> tweak them all the time. Um, we have we have a format that's been generally uh, workable and we haven't had any issues with DOR. Um, so I would. I, I think the piece um, that we're doing right now, which is important, is talking about it and this being memorialized in the report um, uh, to say that this is an order from the, the solid waste or the sewer fund and that it's, you know, the plan is for it to be repaid by rates. I think that's the important piece is that it's covered in this report because um, we do have to show that it was discussed at the finance committee. Um, yeah, I, I would be fine with that. And I just then maybe take another look at it for future. Yeah. But if we keep having millions of dollars for these two enterprise funds, <laughs> take a look at whether mm -hmm. we ever need to reference where they are. So, mm -hmm. Bernie, I'm sorry, your hand is up. Yeah, Bernie. Yeah, um, it's a matter of bookkeeping. The 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 bondholder or the bond issuer isn't going to care where the money comes from because it's an obligation of the town. Uh, so, you know, for our internal purposes, we've identified a funding stream for this, but I don't think it's necessary to. Uh, to have it in the order and it certainly wouldn't be necessary for the bondholder to own that matter of fact the bond owner might be a little bit anxious if we pinpoint a specific fund <laughs> which could run dry um right. you know this basically says the town of amherst is going to pay you back four hundred thousand dollars right um if we say we're going to pay you back four hundred thousand dollars only if we have it in the water or the sewer excise fund um that could be that could be troublesome that might actually cause a premium in the rate my two cents. Yeah. Um, I note that the uh, other order that we're going to be approving um, this evening is does specifically mention the fire department pumper truck in the in the order um, so that there is a differentiation. But I think that the point Bernie's making is unrelated. Paul? Yeah, I just want to emphasize what Bernie said. These are general obligation bonds that uh, we don't tell them where their the funds are coming from. The bond agency is rating the town, not our our funding source. So we can pull the money from wherever we want, um, and we can say how we're going to pay for it. But it's so we're saying that out loud to the council now, and I think we could put that in writing certainly, which I think we've done. Um, but I think if we start to put in language that says we're going to fund it this way, the the credit agent, the bond agency, bonding authorities might have problems with that. Now that that, that helps a lot that makes it so as long as we've written these verbal sentences clearly in in writing i think it makes it clear to everyone where this is where we think it's coming from so with that said i think that uh i think we have an agreement that we will do an amendment to the report to the enterprise fund section just to make it clear somewhere in the report that ties this together and uh, so we can get back to other business, but I'm going to go ahead and make one of the four uh, motions that I had written out on the motion sheet right now because we just talked about it. I move that the Finance Committee recommend that the Council approve appropriation and transfer order FY24-05A 
an order appropriating funds for a portion of the town of Amherst capital program equipment buildings and facilities. Second. Second. Anna, Anna seconded. Um, is there any further discussion? If not, I'm going to call for a vote. Andy, can you just confirm the number you read? The order number? Um, FY 2405A. Uh, the um, pumper is 09. Or the, the, debt, so the, the, debt, the, the, the debt authorization for the pump station is 09. 09A. Yeah. Were you looking to do the pump station, Andy? Oh, wait a minute. Um, yes. Maybe it's back up on the screen so we are all looking at it. I'm yeah, about to do that. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I uh, apologize for the error, but so. Um, I'm going to amend the motion to read. I move that the finance committee recommend that the council approve appropriation and borrowing authorization order FY 2409A in order approving and authorizing borrowing to fund capital projects. Uh, Anna, do you agree to the amendment of the motion? I absolutely do. Okay, so having said that, um, then um, let's go ahead and proceed to vote on that and then Paul has his vote. hand up oh no he doesn't he just didn't take it down okay okay um so with that said uh i'll just go in alphabetical order Anna. aye lynn aye uh bob support matt support bernie Support. Kathy? Yes. Uh, I'm a yes, and Alicia is absent. Yes, yeah, she will not be here tonight. So the vote is four to zero for the voting members with one voting member absent and three resident members in support. Um, so that takes care of that now. Um, where we are uh, should get back to the agenda in general, and I think that we need to talk about um, specific uh, pieces of the um, budget and basically, you know, um, what we want to do is make sure that there's, if there are any questions that remain about the budget, there are any sections that we need to um, specifically discuss that we do so. Um, and I'm going to raise one to begin with. And then um, after that, um, uh, see if there are others. Um, and I don't think, unless somebody makes a motion, it doesn't need to be dealt with as a motion. But Having said that, unless there's a specific motion, the town manager has a, has made a recommendation to us regarding funding for elementary schools, and uh, the we know that the school committee has made a request for additional funds. It was referenced um, by the manager in his budget, and very specifically stated that um, he uh, did not recommend the additional amount. Um, as uh, we've talked about, um, there's a couple things to note. One is, is that um, when it was explained to us by the chair of the school committee that the funds um, that were requested were calculated on the basis of um, taking the amount of money that was the difference between a half a percent or two and a half percent and three percent increase and taking that difference and applying that entire half percent increase to all of the operating budgets 
solely to schools and then dividing proportionately between regional and um, elementary schools and that's how that number was calculated uh, and uh, therefore varying from the practice that has been long-standing practice in, um, that we've had of um, allocating interest uh, the inc any increases to operating budgets on a proportionate basis um, across the board uh, and the uh, so that said it has two effects if it was to be voted one is that it was it's not um, consistent with that policy that I just described and secondly it is not tied to any specific expense uh, or um, uh, any any specific position um, which the committee the school committee also identified so those would be the reasons that I would put forward that um, it's uh, I would uh, I personally would not make a suggestion of changing the town manager's recommendation uh, we did not I did not include that in the report section that I wrote because I was one of the schools but would add that if there's agreement of the committee but I wanted to make sure that today we had the discussion and provided an opportunity for somebody to make a, a different pursue a different position or um, even offer a motion so with that I'm going to stop talking and let my colleagues speak So nobody is asking to speak. Um, I'm unless uh, somebody says something now. I'm going to assume that there's agreement that I can make that amendment to the site. Kathy. Yeah, Andy. I'm. You explained this last week or uh, last Friday. But if you're looking for what we should do with this, I, I wasn't sure quite what you're suggesting, but. In the report, it talks about the 84,000. So are you saying in that section of the report, we considered this and decided we would not recommend it? Is that what you're looking for, uh, to separate it from the financial orders? Because you have a one, two, three, four kind of list here. And would you, were you thinking you would, I'm in, I'm in support of that, let me say that. But I, I wasn't looking, I'm trying to ask you what it is you're, asking of us thank well, you well what i'm suggesting is is that it, it seems that it needs a statement of policy in why we're not recommending a change because it was very specifically requested by the school committee but that's that's what i was saying would it be in this elementary school section right up yes. is that where you would put it okay that's so where you... i would put it no I'd put it right where you said um uh, and i would probably boil it down to a couple sentences because i don't think that um uh, i think it's adequately explained otherwise in that section matt right so this might be similar to what kathy's asking the rationale you just gave that the 0.5 should be spread across all departments that doesn't currently live in the report is that accurate um no oh it is not explicitly because it's for it really is uh it's explicit in the sense that uh when you look at the town manager's budget that the percentage increases for each operating budget is the same percentage and we adopted we haven't questioned the consequence of that. Well, and that has certainly been in council guidelines consistently. Right. So, I mean, the sentence on there's a sentence that says um, just before the first table, budget adjustments table, 
the two paragraphs up from that from that table says this amount was not based upon a request for a spe specific additional expense. It was determined by suggesting that the additional 0.5% of operating budget increases be allocated solely to education and allocated proportionally. That so that's I think that is from my my reading it, which is you know pretty cursory. That's the most on the nose. You might be a little bit more specific on that if you wanted to. If the guidance was to spread it across departments, that might be you know the place. But I, I I think it's adequate as is to be totally honest with you. But since since you brought it up and you brought up that rationale, I just I just point out to that to that sentence. Yeah, no, that is where I would put it. And, and as I said, it, I probably would not add more than two sentences. But if there's agreement, unless there's, I will draft something and send it uh, send it out, uh, noting very clearly where the change is, before, and give you an opportunity to comment before I send it to the council. I think that if I, as long as I get it to the council sometime tomorrow, it can be very late tomorrow. And, in, and I intend it to be late tomorrow so that I have you have the opportunity if you have comments on any changes, this or other changes that we discuss, that there's a little bit of time left. So, Lynn? I, I made note of both the need to add something in that paragraph. I'm keeping the, if you will, the record on draft three. And I also made note uh, about the previous financial order or borrowing order that we just uh, voted on. So they're both there for you, Andy, when you get to that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So is there um, anything additional that any sections of the report that uh, people wish to raise Matt um and I apologize I, I may have missed this as well but I believe in this meeting we talked about the potential for um free cash free. once that's certified but I don't know if that going towards the um school's budget to make up whatever shortfall but I this may this report may not be the place for that Um, I think I'm um, just maybe adding to what Matt said. I think the conversation was when we go to certify free cash, um, like we did this past year, looking at our revenues, um, and if appropriate, you know, the town manager might recommend something. Um, I'm not sure it'll end that, or I'm not sure the same way it'll play out the same way to this past year with the governor's budget uh, or the final budget coming in so much higher. But I know we had that discussion about evaluating that again in the fall. So I guess, Matt, that since you've raised the question, then uh, should we include somewhere in the report, either in this section or more generally, that if additional funds become available, uh, because there's a significant addition to free cash uh, when free cash is certified, that uh, we would suggest that the manager consider a supplemental budget uh, providing additional funds to operating budgets as previous as done the prior year. Uh, the only tweak I would recommend is. Um the supplemental budget this past year wasn't because of free cash. It was because operating revenues actually came in higher because state aid came in higher. Um, so it, we were following our policies. We were lining up an op, you know, a recurring revenue with a recurring expense. Um, so just a slightly different than using free cash. So you didn't, it didn't happen at the time after we knew what the free cash was likely to be. We did it, I think we did it at that same time because there were a number of financial orders. Um, there were some appropriations from free cash for one-time capital expenses, um, but it wasn't, I think it was just because we try to bundle that stuff together for the council. 
But free cash usually increases only because you either underspend by having uh, not been able to spend all of the, in this case, FY23 expenditures or uh, additional revenue. Mm -hmm. But our, but again, the, the extra half percent we allocated in the fall was because um, the state state revenues from what we built the budget on came in were uh, came in much higher because the the final state budget doubled on restricted general government aid, um, which was kind of a you know surprise. Yeah, I think that at this point we probably know since the Senate budget is. A known commodity. We know what our maximum is at this point. Bernie? I, I would be reluctant to make promises that uh, Paul might not be able to keep and, and mention the fact that there's, you know, you know, I think you're always open at any point in time. I think you're open to having to amend the budget if something occurs, but I, I, I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to start a uh, another bidding war for if we get free cash, we must do this uh, for one. Uh, I, I think we need to wait and see what happens. I'm very anxious about this next year. Um, I think there's going to be it's I think there's going to be a recession. I think we're going to see that um, we don't know what exactly is happening with uh, a, a number of federal programs now because of the, the so-called agreement. Um, I, I would just be very reluctant to open that, open that door. <laughs> uh, you know, we have a good management, uh, a good management team and uh, uh, stuff gets monitored very carefully. And if uh, there appears to be bumps in the road, I think we can trust our, our staff to recommend to the council that changes be made. Kathy? I was going to say basically the same thing. I would be, I'd stay silent on this. I mean, we, um, although Sean, you said, you and Paul have come up with something creative for our EMT firefighter line item. Um, there's there's a lot of demand if we miraculously have extra money to spend in the fall. Um, and I, I'd be leery of doing this. You know, the only comment I would make is that extra 0.5 basically just came to us. We never came back together. Um, that came from you all. Um, so if there had been any thought of something more on the education line, that might have been the time to do it. You know, whether it, everything was 4.8 and something was 5.1. But, you know, so it's a better time to do it when we do the, the indicators. If there's a reason going into a year that we... Whatever, again, I want to say whatever we've done in the past, I wouldn't say just because of we've done it in the past, we should always do it that way. So if there's a good reason to depart from that, we should be looking at that carefully in October, November when we're looking forward. So I'm putting my hand down. I am agreeing with Bernie on not uh, opening up the what we might do in the fall should something positive happen. I'm hoping our ARPA money is totally protected, by the way. Um, it's, it's so. Yeah, for, for what it's worth, we have received word that that was not part of, um, that's not part of the, uh, it's not at risk as part of the current deal that's being worked on, um, which is good news. Not that, not that it may not be a risk in future deals, so it's something we still need to be mindful of, but. Yeah. Um, okay. Hey, Lynn. Um, and. I'm just going to say I agree with Bernie and Kathy's position on this. So, um, Matt, are you okay with the way that this is concluding? Oh yeah, I mean, I you know, as I said at the outset, I I don't know this document is where the point is. I just recall our discussion and thought it was worth asking. I, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. And I think I raised it initially, so I am. I'm moving away from what I said, Matt. <laughs> that was, in fact, you're, you were remembering completely correctly. Okay. So I remember too well. Other issues that people want to raise. Matt, do you see it? your hand is still up. You... No, it's a, it's a new one. Okay, go with it then. Yeah, and um, 
and he had asked you you were the one who shared the information with me um but this is a question for sean when we heard the uh, public health update we had not had the news yet about the um health director resigning and so i wanted to ask that question of you first if there's any uh budget obviously you know obviously it's a it's a budget slot that will be held um and i'm kind of i'll talk slowly so lynn can scroll down to that section but um I wanted to ask if there was anything within this document that should reflect those challenges um, of uh, Jennifer, you know, resigning uh -huh. or uh, I don't know, I'll just kind of open it to you and just and bring our attention to it because it would feel a little tone deaf to write it as written now with that news. Yeah, I don't know if anything needs to be added to this document. Um, I will say it's never a good time to have a transition, but it is a um, it is a time where the health department has some additional staffing uh, in terms of they've had some ARPA funds allocated to fu um, maintain sort of administrative support position um, and to bring the public health nurse up to full time. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of your larger question about the, the transition, I think uh, the, the budget and the uh, resources there are sufficient to handle the transition. Um, I'm not sure it needs to be mentioned in this document unless there's something to your point, that's written in a way that maybe we should reconsider it um, because she wasn't able to attend. But um, no budget, direct budget implications in FY24. There'll be some staff turnover, um, you know, costs or savings depending on who fills that position, but um, no major impacts on the FY24 budget. Right. Related, a related question, actually. I'm sorry, Andy, go ahead. No, as I said, we didn't speculate about the financial implications of others changeovers in staffing, uh, like police chief. Right. We certainly did right. know about it. Yeah, and as of May 23rd, she was in fact, you know, the public health director. So it's not an, it's not inaccurate. So I, you know. I, and she still is until yeah. um, Paul made July. the exact date, July. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but since we're on the section, and this is, I promise, the last piece I'll ask about this, um, I could not tell and maybe, you know, you don't want to tease it out any further, but if you look at the very last sentence there, it says, from reviewing the website, these appear to be infectious and either. Uh, is that known, the either or, is that known now, or is it okay as written? Um, this is related to the additional um, staffing within the department. Yeah, uh, you had mentioned that some of the staffing, I think you said two, uh, uh, I feel a little awkward talking about positions that are quite this. Yeah, point, you know. um, I think, I think I do. So, um, yeah, so um, we could be more broad in the way the positions are described. I think these aren't necessarily wrong. Um, uh, you know, one of the positions or one of the part-time positions that we were funding uh, with ARPA was sort of a case uh, manager, you know, related to COVID. Um, and that that piece that position is actually starting to wind down. Um, the other position is the administrative assistant position um, and then part of the public health nurse. Um, so I think you could say, I think you could just say the administrative, you could lose the the public health program assistant, or pick one I, or the I, other. I think they're both accurate. I, um, I think you just delete that sentence. I'm not sure yeah, what that's tells what you. I would do. Yeah. Okay. It reads really well without that sentence. <laughs> yeah, Kathy, your hand was up separately, so. Yeah, mine. Mine is. I. I'm. I'm going to. If anyone else has anything substantive, mine is just a struck a structure issue and it's a labeling so I, i'll just wait and there's one typo but i can send you there's probably more than one typo but i saw one typo which is pretty and i one other flash by me and i'll send those later so i'm going to just wait and see if anyone has anything else substantive um andy i'm just going to go to the one place that talks about inspectors and I hope I'm here. Yeah, of course, from your prior comment, there was a modification, just so you're aware. 
Okay, the in number of inspections has increased. Okay, got it. I'm fine. Totally fine. Yeah, no, I just want to acknowledge that I had invited people, uh, members of the committee, to send any suggestions to me, but not do it to all. And then I had to combine, and I had two different members point out a problem that uh, Lynn was just referencing because she was one of the two. And uh, so I just was, used, uh, but I, because two people were pointing the problem, I just came up with the solution. And yes, we are. Um, anything else? Otherwise, I'm going to go back to Kathy since she had something. I've, I've read it plenty of times now. Kathy? Okay, if you go all the way up to the top, Lynn, I, I like uh, a reader's guide to structure. So you've got, um, you've got a section that I would call process. Then you have a section called recommendation. Then you have a very, very, very long section. So bu budget sections. I would label them with a capital letter A, B, and C, or Roman numeral one, two, and three, because it, it, you know, and maybe you can just say, you know, we summarize these in three sections. It's it's purely a, um, yeah, it's what Lynn's doing, you know. So there's three sections because the they're they're different enough. Yeah, that's it. That's all, you know, and you can figure out exactly how those lay out, but it's, you know, what we want, what the council will focus on is section two. Um, and hopefully they'll just, yeah, that's it. I tend to write things, longer reports with executive summaries and have the action be as soon as possible in it and Andy you've done that where our recommendations will be by page two <laughs> and then it will go on for quite a number of pages yeah actually that gets into an interesting question as to whether you think that um, the recommendation about the school even though it's not it's not it's a negative it's not doing something but would you include that there um, I, I could, you know, since we're about to have to vote on, um, orders that get preceded by words and said, I could put, see putting a sentence there. We also considered the request by the school committee for an extra $84,000 and are not recommending it and just plunk that sentence in and say, see, you know, page, whatever of the education, but not make it a big deal of it in the recommendations, just a, a quick reference to it. So people don't have to plow their way through the education section to find that. It would just be, I would do, do order number, order, number, you know, with however we're going to do it. And that's it. We also considered the request by the school committee for adding 84,000 to the elementary school and are not recommending that. Um, and I would just end it there. And since technically we're not even allowed to do it under the charter, <laughs> um, but I wouldn't get into the, we're never supposed to increase anything. Um, we are allowed to. Oh, we can increase? Yeah, okay. The schools. The school, yeah. for schools, okay. Yeah, the- oh, I, I, Forget I said that, I don't, I'm I'm just su suggesting a really quick way to reference that in the recommendation as the very last a single sentence. So I'm I'm done. Yeah, and no, I think that the references that uh, the charter says, except as provided by Mass General Law, and Mass General Law provides that. Right. The council on the request of the school committee and with two thirds vote can increase. And then there's some there's some other language that follows about the limits of that because you have to right. make 
budget balance. I, I forgot and I misspoke. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, so that's yeah. uh, just so that everybody on the committee is understanding that. That's why I wanted to make sure I said it, but I don't want it in the report because I don't think it needs to be there. Is there anything else um, regarding the report draft as we had it that hasn't already been discussed? Uh, I assume that everybody had an opportunity to read the paragraphs that were added for capital improvement program. And there was nothing there because that's the only new thing since draft two. Okay. And everybody yeah. knows what it says about uh, the additional recommendation about roads that is incorporated in that section which was brought up in our last meeting. Those actually um, implementing a statement made at our last meeting. So with that said, um, not sure that we're not ready to just go on to the other three orders and uh, uh, to, to a conclusion. Um, I just want to make sure I share make this. this meeting really quick in there because there's one other thing I just wanted to let you know but maybe I'll just tell you right now uh we have uh for Monday's council meeting which is not the budget meeting the budget meeting will be later in June but there are two things that are on the agenda for Monday uh one is the water and sewer rates and the other is the of optional tax exemptions. So I started a separate but um, committee report just covering those three items, which I anticipate is going to be no more than a couple pages, and it's more analogous to how we're handling prior, uh, you know, our usual reports. This one's a very unusual report. So um, I just wanted to let you know that I was working today on a uh, additional financial report to go in the packet that just covers those three issues in reference to the fact that they are on the agenda for Monday. So um, having said that, we're back to um, needing to um, go with our orders and um, because we're recommending then the plan as uh, presented. And uh, so with that said, the motion would be, I move that the Finance Committee recommend that the Council approve appropriation and transfer order 24-04A in order appropriating the Town of Amherst operating budget for fiscal year 2024. Second. So that motion has been made and seconded by Lynn. And there's no further discussion and I always look for hands before I call on it. Um, I know that Anna is gonna have to leave the meeting at 6.30 and she may have left. I'm still here. You're still here? And I'm call still here. <laughs> I'll call on your Hi. mom. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Lynn, you voted. Hi. Uh, Bob? Support. Uh, Matt? Support. Bernie? Support. Kathy? Yes. And I'm a yes. And, uh, Alicia's absent, so it's four members voting yes, one absent of the voting members, and the three resident members um, in support. And um, so then 
the next um, motion and is there any questions about it is um, ask uh, you can ask them now because we're getting into the two that have to do with the capital improvement program one is a general one and one is um, a borrowing so I move that the finance committee recommend that the council approve appropriation and transfer order 2405A in order appropriating funds for the portion of the town of Amherst capital program equipment buildings and facilities. Second. So the motion has been made and seconded. And again, I'll look to see if hands go up for any additional discussion or questions regarding the order. Seeing none. I'm just going to go down the list again. Again, um, get votes. You see no hands up. Anna? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Bob? Support. Matt? Support. Bernie? Support. Kathy? Yes. And I'm a yes, and Alicia is absent. So again, as four members voted, one members in, uh, voting aye, one voting member absent, and three resident members in support. And the last order is um, this motion. I move that the Finance Committee recommend that the Council approve appropriation and borrowing authorization order FY 2406A in order of approving and authorizing borrowing to fund the purchase of a new fire department bumper truck. Second, Devlin Gothier. So we have second. a second a motion that's been made and seconded. Is there any questions um, or comments about discussion about this motion? I'll uh, we'll give it a moment to see if there are any hands. And if not, I'm going to go back and call for a vote. Seeing nobody has raised their hand, Anna? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Bob? Support. Matt? Support. Bernie? Support. Kathy? Yes. And I'm a yes, and Alicia's absent. So again, the vote is four voting members voting yes, one voting member absent, and three resident members in support. So that takes care of the orders um, that we have on the agenda. Um, and I don't think that we have any other business uh, 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 did already announce that um, I'm working on an unrelated uh, committee report so that you wouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, and uh, we don't have any minutes for this time. And I, I don't think I have anything else. Is there anybody else who has anything else that they'd like to raise that's unanticipated? Bernie? Uh, just very quickly, I'd like to uh, offer thanks to, to Paul, to Sean, um, and the whole group for um, wading through and cre creating a pretty interesting document, a very detailed document, and managing a, a very difficult situation. So uh, even though we uh, at times we get testy, uh, we, we do appreciate the work <laughs> and, uh, uh, and and recognize the, the and recognize the difficulty uh, that has to be overcome to, to produce this product. So thank you, uh, gentlemen, and please uh, thank the staff. Yeah, hey. well, well, we'll do that, but also thanks to the Finance Committee. You guys really go about this in a very diligent way. You create a very big document in terms of your report which I think gives comfort to the other members of the town council to know that you've done your due diligence. And you always ask really good questions. I mean, you, you know your stuff and we appreciate it. And the fact that you've been doing it for a number of years helps us do our job better. And Sean really deserves, I mean, he really carried this weight. 
No, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And again, we appreciate the feedback as well. Um, every year we get feedback and we try to do things to make it a little bit better. Um, all the suggestions are good, you know, from the benefits to the uh, the capital improvement program and ways we can make that better. So um, uh, keep the feedback coming. We'll keep uh, trying to make things as best we can. Yeah, I have a concluding comment, Mama Bikathy. Um I want to echo what was just said, but I also want to thank you, Andy. Um, uh, you uh, you pulled together a lot of information, and I know a whole bunch of people wrote sections, and it's pretty invisible if the style that we all submitted varied a lot. You've managed to smooth it over. That doesn't look like we had uh, an eight-member <laughs> authored where everyone writes differently and so i know some other people um i didn't this time i'm reading but but thank you for it and i do i do think um you know that somehow we should capture sean when you said things improve we should maybe at a future finance committee just capture some things that go by in passing like next year this next, you know I still would like an index to the budget book to tell you the truth in the beginning so I can find the police page I've uh -huh. figured out how to thumb through it and online I can type the word but if I'm carrying the book around but uh -huh. just a set of things that are on the documents so that we um don't we don't need to talk about revisiting them doesn't mean you need to do them all just that we have a record it would be and, and i think that's up to us just to generate a we, we talked about the following things to be considered in the future we do a little bit of that in jcpc you know but this would be great so uh, another year another million dollars is that where we are <laughs> We're gonna take that print. We're gonna get. We're gonna get that printed book out of your hands, Kathy. No, no, no more. No, you know it's it's really helpful if you're. Um, yes, it is. If you're trying to put stickies in to go read something, but yes, you're right. Um, I can read online. I'm good at it. Thanks. Um. So, I want to thank everybody here too. Um, thank members of the committee. And um, everybody just, uh, you know, all, all of you who are here just really plugged in and uh, did your part and, and wrote a section and uh, it would have been impossible for one, any one person, um, no matter how much time you have to write as much. Uh, and it really did work. It was uh, something that was a community effort and I think we should all take pride pride in and uh, you know so I want to thank everybody and I uh, want to thank Matt is uh for Matt I uh, is the one person I asked to to do a little bit more on the section and he did it very quickly and promptly and didn't even at least audibly grimace that I could see so uh, I appreciated everybody just uh, you know, doing the uh, making this all possible because I, as I was putting it together in its final form, I really thought that we had come up with a very good process, which gets into one other comment that I have, and that is that when we think about this, um, I would seriously recommend to the committee that's going to be the reviewing the charter next year, that it look at that 30 day requirement. Uh, I think that it's really unreasonable expectation uh, to try and do this in 30 days. It put a tremendous amount of pressure on this committee. And, you know, I appreciate how we all banded together and arose to the occasion. But, uh, you know, it was harder for us in the first years, and as there's turnover, which there eventually will be on the committee, and there's learning curve for people, I think it's um, something that ought to be re-examined as to uh, how that time is divvied up. Uh, so uh, that that's the only ad additional comment that I have about the process, uh, which isn't anything we can do, but we can Yes, that the committee that's going to be reviewing the charter next year 
give some thought to it. So is there anything else that anybody has that they want to raise, uh, Lynn? When are we meeting next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, good question. And uh, glad you raised it. And I have to see if I can find my... Uh, I know we're not meeting on Friday at two. We are not meeting on Friday. We originally had planned it, but I canceled it a while ago. And I hope that everybody got the message that there is no meeting this Friday. That I, um, it is uh, Scott Livingstone's, uh, the, the, not his last day, but the time that we're going to take some time to get together and thank him. Um, and uh, I know that all the counselors know about it. Um, Paul, if you feel like uh, resident members should know about the two events, uh, you know, please take the opportunity. I would like to think that they're essential parts of our community. I'll make sure they know by email. And uh, the uh, it's uh, we we talked about I think in oh there's one other item that we do need to talk about but I'm not sure that I want to do it uh, in a meeting where Alicia is not uh, present uh, but uh, we do need to get back to this question of when it is that we are uh, meeting um, because we had set up these twice a week things but Matt had raised a fair question about uh, not meeting on at 5.30 again, uh, or, or excuse me, again. Yeah, uh, I think it's important to go back to three. I mean, it's it's asked a lot of people to be eating through their dinner period. Um, well, I think that if we did it, Alicia's statement to us that we were operating on was is that she's not available Monday through Thursday until 5 30 and that she's available on friday at um generally during the day so that if we're going to do daytime meetings so the logical um resolution to this if 5 30 is not a good time and we want to make this our last 5 30 meeting is to at least for the time being go towards Friday meetings. And uh, so if we did that, I think I'm going to need to get the cal uh, calendar up because we do need, we will need to schedule another meeting. Uh, would be uh, the uh, June 12th or June 19th, I believe would be the. So not next Tuesday, I should take off my calendar. The sixth. I think that's correct. Okay. So it's June 9th or June 16 or June 23. And you only have you have the following council meetings. You have June 5th, June 12th, and June 26th. And the issue of the salary of counselors has to come before the council no later than June 26th. And we also have a CPA recommendation that should be very quick, but we were trying to get it acted on before the end of June. Do we have to do a public forum for that one? I think um, it's unclear, so we decided to just do it um, to, to be safe. Okay. It's a, it's a request not for a specific project, but just to establish a reserve for FY24. Um, All right. I'm meeting with Cena tomorrow about our agendas. I have a preference for June 9th, but Andy, if we don't have to decide right now, I can just put a soft hold on the 9th and the 16th is what I think Lynn is telling us. I Those would be the I cannot I cannot do the 23rd, so it has to, I, I absolutely can't. Um, so it's both, both the 9th and the 16th are inconvenient to me and for me and um i'd prefer to you, you know we're going to change schedules and the, the reason for changing the schedule should be present at the meeting um 
so the sooner I hear about that, the more I can, um, the more I can make arrangements from my own personal schedule. That if I had a forced choice of those two dates, I'd I think the ninth would be preferable. Can Athena send out a doodle like like previously? I it, for me, I really talking through this is it's tricky. I think. Yeah, that that would be good for me too. And what Bernie is raising is you know, do we really have to switch off of Tuesdays to Friday? So just a poll that put the 13th in, which would be that week or the whatever. But I, I'd rather not do this right now. Um, I'm just We're telling fine. you, if it's later than the um, 16th, I can't do it, so. All right, so I will t talk with Athena tomorrow about polling. And also, I believe Alicia might be available tomorrow to find out when she's available. So, uh, why don't we leave it at that and we'll get uh, either Lynn or I can get back to you or Athena. So, with that said, I don't think we have any other business today. Thanks. Good. Good. Thanks. 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 You've done a good job. Thank you all. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for all the hard work. Andy, thank, thank you. you very much. You steered this process really nicely. You get yeah. a, lot, a, lot well of, a lot of time. It's always thank a pleasure you. to work with you, Andy. Well, thank you. We're adjourned. Bye. Bye.